Hi family and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Brittany and I'm so happy to be joining you today. This week we've been on a journey studying out the restoration of all things. But what do we as believers need to do in order to see this restoration coming to fullness in our lives? Well, let's continue the study with Dad as he takes us deeper into the many aspects involved in restoration. Enjoy! Praise God as you see that open your Bible at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We have been talking about the restoration of all things. The restoration of all things. And then you have the next gift would be the working of miracles. The working of miracles. Everybody say working. So you understand that, yes, the working of miracles, it's the supernatural power. We're giving definitions for each one of these. The supernatural power given from God to produce a miracle. Supernatural power given from God to produce a miracle. Now, what is a miracle? What is a miracle? You know, very often people say, oh, that's a miracle. Well, what is a miracle? Well, how would you define it? Well, one of the better definitions I've heard is that miracle is an intervention in the ordinary course of nature. Intervention in the ordinary course of nature. See, when God said light be, then he's never had to amend that. Light is still traveling at the speed of light. Thousands of years later. Once he says tree be, that tree came into existence with the capability of producing its own seed, then the seed from that tree will produce another tree without God having to do something. It's in continual, perpetual motion forward. The tree you have today came off that very first tree spoken back there. Everything that God puts in into existence has natural laws governing it. But every now and then, for God to get His will done, He has to bypass that natural law. If someone is over in, 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 in Cape Town, but He needs them in London, and for any reason they're not able to get there any other, any other way, God has the capability of putting them in London. We see that happening when Philip was speaking to that eunuch, and he got up into the chariot, and he led the eunuch to the Lord, and then he baptized him. And then the man went off, went off on his chariot, and Philip started walking. Next moment, he found himself in the next town. Come on. Some of us looking shocked. Go read your Bible. You'll be amazed what's in there when you go and actually read it. These things happen. You getting a hold of this? So God has a way of bypassing natural laws. When Joshua said, Lord, let the sun stand still and the moon stop moving. I've got a battle to fight before the sun goes down. And, the, and it did. It stopped for a whole day. Amen. Someone says, do you believe that stuff? It's in the book. I said to God, don't write something if you don't want me to believe it. If you wrote it in there, it actually happened. I said it actually happened. Am I in the household of faith? Yeah, I want to hear some how they men. I want to see me looking. Yeah. Do you believe? That's the word. So miracle bypasses the natural law. And that's when we see the working. Notice it's the working of miracles. See, the, the gift of faith receives the miracle. The miracle is still happening, but you're receiving it. But the working of miracles, you're putting into action by the work of God into putting it into motion. But it's still bypassing the natural laws. For example, Moses at the Red Sea. When he stood there and uh, the, Egypt was, the Egyptian soldiers were coming down on him and he, they were stuck between the sea and the soldiers and God said, I will still deliver you. You lift up your staff. So he had to lift his staff. But the moment he lifted his staff, there was nothing more he could do. Come on, he didn't say, quickly, guys, build a bridge. Start digging. Maybe we can put a tunnel under the sea. 
No, he just lifted his staff. What happened? All of a sudden, the laws changed. Where you have the sea, next moment, a force goes in, a wind that blows the water back so that there's walls on either side and the ground is dry. Come on, how have you ever drained a pool or drained a lake or something like that? It's still wet for a long time. No, the Bible says they walked on dry ground. And they had an aquarium on either side of them. Come on, that, that's a natural law being bypassed. That's a working of miracles. Now, once the work was done, as they were walking to keep those walls up, now you're in the gift of faith. You see how they work together. I explained to you how a hand has fingers that need to all work together to make it happen. So very often you see these gifts operating. The one goes into action and the other one will reinforce it. So the working of miracles opened the sea and then the gift of faith kept it open. And there's no ways he could have made, stay, 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 stay. No, you just had to believe. Just walk. Come on, come on, guys. Let's go. They just knew they were okay. Everybody say, gift of faith, working of miracles. Remember Elisha, who when that woman was in debt, and he said, go get a whole bunch of, of, of jars, jugs, bottles, containers. Don't get a few now. Why? Because God was ready to multiply. What do you have in your house? She said, some oil. And so when he, as they were getting the jars, as they were bringing, the sons were running up and down every neighbor that they could find. You have pots. We need more pots. We need more pots. And they're getting pots from all over town. And as long as they kept bringing pots, they poured, there was more oil. And they poured, and there was more oil. And they poured, there was more oil. Eventually the son said, there's no more pots in town. Then the oil stopped flowing. You notice, as long as they were working... The miracle was happening. See, the working of miracles, operating. Jesus, when he said to Philip, how are we going to feed these people? Philip said, 120 denarii is not enough. He says, what do you have? Five loaves, two fish. Give it to me. And he prayed over it, and he blessed it. What's the blessing? It's a spoken word to multiply, to prosper, to increase. And as he spoke, he began to divide. Notice the Bible says he gave it to each of the disciples and they distributed. As they distributed the bread and the fish, it kept multiplying. See, it was in the working. In the working, the miracle took place. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, family. You're getting a hold of this? Everybody say the working of miracles. I remember when... When, uh, before we were saved, uh, Janine had a disease which was called fibrous dysplasia. And uh, it's a horrible disease. For those that haven't heard yet what that's about, it's a disease where fibers attack uh, within a bone. And the bone, what happens is the, the, these fibers grow in the bone. And when they took an x-ray of her leg, it had split the bone. The bone had a sliver through the top part of her leg, had a sliver through, just a little sliver of bone was still keeping it, but there was a slit all the way through. And so much so the, the radiologist didn't even let her get off the table because they said if, if you put wrong pressure on that, it can snap at any moment, but it needs to be operated immediately. And they took her into, immediately booked her into hospital and did a... a, a a huge operation where they cut into her leg and just above the knee cut the bone off and just below her hip joint cut the bone off and then if you imagine the ball and socket here they put a steel bar which was bolted into the ball part and then the bar was, became the bone and then the bottom part of the bar they put self-tapping screws into the bone to keep it there and so now her top part of the leg is a steel bar and then they go into the back take bone out of there and pack it around the steel bar and by doing that there was the bone could start to grow back and uh, then they zipped her up and it took months to learn to walk again horrible 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 operation i don't know if anybody here has had a bone operation they tell me a bone operation is the most painful operation in the body that you can have and so 
uh, took a long time to recover. You can imagine the agony and the pain and all of that. And this was all before we were saved. A few years later, she started developing some pain in the lower part of her leg and went for x-rays, and they found that she had a very rare form of the disease. Normally, most people have it, just one bone is affected in their lifetime. But there's a further rare form. It's a, it's a very rare disease as it is, but even a more rare form is when the disease starts to spread through the bones. And so they discovered fibrous dysplasia in her tibia, which, you know, in the lower part of your leg, you're at the main bo bone, which is the fibia, and the back little one's called the tibia. And so they discovered the fibrous dysplasia in the tibia, the back part. So the doctor said, well, it's not really a structural problem. It doesn't have to come out immediately. But to make sure it doesn't keep spreading, we need to take it out as well. So it's not really a structural problem. You can, you can live without your tibia. But, uh, you know, we'll, we just need to take it out. Of course, it devastated Janine. You can imagine having already gone through something like that. And now you have to have a gain when you were told it's very rare. It usually happens in one bone. Now you've got it in another bone. And so, of course, uh, she broke down and cried. And, you know, we were all very sad. And we had to go and tell the family. And so we would. We'd go and tell all the different family. At that time, my mother was born again. She was serving the Lord. And she was at Christian Family Church, Johannesburg, with Apostle Thea. And she had tried to lead us to the Lord many, many times before. And that's a whole other part of my testimony of how I was very, very angry at, against my mother. And I told her one day, if you ever bring up Jesus, I'll walk out your life. Just talk to me about the Bible again. And uh, she had to hold back. She, she just went to pray and she interceded. And she was praying that, that we would be saved. And so with that in mind, uh, we, when we went to go and visit mom to tell her, and uh, Janine told my mom what had happened, what the doctor had said. Mom said, okay. And then she got up and said, anybody want tea, coffee? And we gave our orders, and she's, as she's walking, she says, Janine, come with me. And they, instead of going left to the kitchen, they turned right to go up the passage. And I thought, what is going on here now? I hear my mother's door close, her bedroom door. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I know these Christians. <laughs> and then after a long time, they come back, and Janine walks in. She comes and sits down to me, and I say, and so what did you talk about? No, nothing. <laughs> now, you know, no, nothing, just... <laughs> You don't care what's going on. You just want to get alone. Now. I'm going to go, we go home now. I've got to talk to you. <laughs> and so eventually it was time to go home. And we were driving home. And uh, we stopped at a traffic light. And Janine turned to me and said, Mom says Jesus will heal us. I said, uh, that's it. I told my mother, I told her, and I, I, that's it, I'm out of there. I told her, don't bring up Jesus, don't talk to us. No, I, I got angry. And Janine at that moment said, please, doll, if you can just, I, I, I'm desperate. I am desperate for anything. And if you can just support me, I want to try this. Now, the moment she said, if you support me, she had me. Uh, that's just my nature. Uh, if you say you want to go to the moon, how are you going to get there? I'm going to walk. I'll make sure we find a way for you to walk there. I'll, I'll just back you. I'll support you. I'm, I'm, I'm just that kind of guy. Whatever you dream, I will make sure you get there. And so I said, okay, I'll support you. Now, in the back of my mind, I'm kind of, you know, I'm wondering what's behind that big billboard there. Because they had this huge billboard, Christian City at the time. And I, we always wondered what happens behind those walls. And so I, I, I wanted to get inside just to go see, but I had a, had a good excuse to go. Now my wife wants to go get healed, so I thought, okay, I'll come. I'll support you, but I want to see you. Know, he's... And of course we went, and our first service, I mean, you know, it was crazy. I'd never, ever seen. I mean, Pastor Bev got up and said, let's, you know, we're going to sing to the Lord. She opened up in prayer. Next moment, it's like the spaceship took off. I was like... Because I was brought up in a church where they didn't even use musical instruments. And so I'm now standing there and thinking, what is, this is not a disco, it's a church. 
And so we having praise and worship and singing. I sat down. I looked at everybody. I thought, how would you get so many idiots in one room at one time? <laughs> and so eventually Pastor Theo gets up and he teaches the word. And then afterwards he said, now there are people here that need healing. If you want healing, I'm asking all the pastors to come out to the front and stand in front. You go to any one of the pastors and tell them they'll pray for you. So Janine says, this is what I came for. I said, okay, I'll come with you. Went to stand in the front. The pastor says, what's the problem? Janine explained it. And he says, do you believe Jesus will heal you? And she says, yes. Like, you do? He says, yes. So he says, okay. Well, yeah, what are we going to do? I'm going to lay hands on you. So he lays hands on her, and she falls on the ground. I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> and he's going, no, no, hang on. This, this is God. I said, what do you mean, God? I saw you put your hands on her. <laughs> so he says, no, God's healing her. So I'm standing there looking at this. Now, I know Janine's not a flake. All these other people, I don't know about them. You know, they, they brainwashed or whatever. I don't know. But my wife, I know her. She's normal. And yes, she's lying on the floor. And I'm thinking, what happened yet? So I'm, I'm, I'm now curious. I am curious. I'm, I'm, I'm not ignorant, stupid. And so eventually she comes around, the pastor picks her up, and she, she says, just check your leg. She feels it. She goes, the pain is gone. The pain is gone. So I, that's interesting. <laughs> so the pastor gets his Bible out. And he goes to 1 Peter 2, 24. And he reads the scripture. And there it says, by Jesus stripes you've been healed. He says, now listen, you've been healed. But knowing the devil, he could come back and try and steal that healing. So if you feel pain or discomfort, here's the scripture you must quote. And in the back of my mind, I'm going, yeah, right, there we go. This is psychosomatic. And for a moment, she's not feeling the pain, and this is his cover job. <laughs> this is his backup. You know, if the pain comes back, yeah, okay. Uh, you must remember, I was very skeptical, horribly skeptical. So, we go home. Next day, we had to go for the final x-ray before the operation. And so they went in for the x-ray. I'm with Janine. She had the x-ray done. And you know, you sit there a little while, and back then it was huge big envelopes with a film in it and then a letter. And so we're heading back to the doctor's room. Now, I didn't want to wait till we get to the doctor's room. I opened the letter. And I pulled it out, and I had a look at it. And the letter says, the fibrous dysplasia has got worse. The bone must come out immediately. And so Janine broke down and started crying. And I said to her, hang on a moment. What did the doctor say? Uh, what did the pastor say? Now, must remember, this is not Pastor Alan speaking. This uncircumcised Philistine heathen. <laughs> I don't know the spirit of faith. I don't care what faith is. I don't even care what the Bible says. All I remember, the pastor said, if something happens, say the scripture. Now, what's happening? Gift of faith. I said to her, what did the pastor say? So she said, I must say, by Jesus' stripes I've been healed. I said, say it. <laughs> so she said, by Jesus' stripes I've been healed. And we keep walking. She started crying again. I said, whoa, say it. Say it. I wasn't, I didn't know that if you confess, you have what you say. I didn't know that. I knew that if she spoke, she wouldn't cry. And so I didn't want my wife crying. So I kept her talking. And I didn't know what to talk about. So all I said is, say it again. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Keeping her mind off the problem. That's what I was doing. Keeping her mind off the problem. Keep her from Just say it again. Say it again. Say it again. We got back to the doctor's room. We took the x-rays out. Put them into the window. Read the letter. Looked confused. Went into this back room, got out other x-rays, put them up in the window. He's looking, he's looking, 
Letter? Shakes his head. I said, Doctor, what's going on? He said, come have a look here. And so he shows me on the new x-ray, the, the old x-ray. He says, on the old x-ray, here's the fibrous dysplasia. Now, here's the thing you need to know, and he's telling me this. Fibrous dysplasia grows in the bone. The best we hope for, we measure it, is that it stops spreading. If it stays dormant, that's okay. If it keeps spreading, it's a problem. There's no way for the body to clear it out. It can't go away once it's in the bone. It says, now look at the new x-ray. And the bone on the new x-ray is clear. Clear. There's no fibrous dysplasia at all. And he's looking and says, now to go from that x-ray to this one, his words were, that is not medically possible. I can't explain that. It's like you're looking at someone else's x-ray. And I said, doctor, would you call that a miracle? He said, you call it what you want to, but I can't operate on that bone. Come on, give Jesus praise. Now, family of God, what did we do physically to fix that bone? Nothing. But I know this, that because of that miracle, I went home that night, and I got before God in my study. My wife went to go and bath, and I said, I need to go and spend some time. And I got on my knees, and I said, God, I don't know where I was brought up. I don't know what God they were talking about. They said miracles were past. They were gone away. And yeah, I'm staring a miracle in its face. And a doctor even says he can't. And I said, I don't know how that happens, that you decide to reach down through my anger, through my blasphemy, and he Heal my wife without even a guarantee. I'll say thank you. That God I want to know. That God I want to serve. And I'm yours today. Hallelujah. Come, let's stand to our feet. Raise your hand to the Lord and say, Today I've heard the word of God. That word brought faith to my heart. And I am a believer, not a doubter. As a hearer of the word, I'm also a doer. And Father, I'm ready. You are the God of miracles. And I'm ready to be a conduit. Wherever you need a miracle, I'm expecting the work of miracles. It's happening. It's happening in my life. And I thank you that I'm going to see miracles as a regular occurrence in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Shout amen. Praise God. Jesus is retained in the heavens until the restoration of all things. The tremendous price that Jesus paid on the cross was not only paid for the restoration of our relationship with God, but also for the restoration of all things. Been fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. That has to be restored and then everything else that God promised as a result of that. In this series, Alan Bag delves into some of the amazing things Jesus restored to us through His death on the cross. So when we talk about restoration of all things, Heavenly God, I'm going to look at a few things that I believe are really critical in these last days to have restored so we can experience the best of God. He restored our relationship with God. He paid the price to restore our identity and He paid for us to once again walk with God and experience His power at work in and through our lives. He's given you freely all things to enjoy and God has released that into your life so that you may be aware of it. Visit us online to get hold of your series and contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries offices. Get hold of your series and build your faith so you can walk in and experience God's full restoration. My dad often says that if it costs Jesus his blood for me to have it, then I want it. And I have great news for you. You too can have it. 
This series is packed with truths and principles that we can apply in our lives to see everything that Jesus paid for restored back to us. So I want to encourage you to get your hands on a copy and continue building your faith so that you can see the restoration of all things. Now, my friend, I know that as we've studied out this series, there are aspects in your life that you are trusting for restoration. And I want to pray with you right now. So let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for our friends and partners. I thank you that you have plans for their lives that are good. We know that the enemy can come in and steal and destroy, but we declare restore. There is restoration taking place in their lives right now, and we believe we will see miracles at work, signs and wonders taking place so that they will see the fullness of your promises manifesting in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are so excited. We know that restoration is taking place in your lives. And as this happens, please won't you contact us at the details below. We'd love to hear your testimony and share in the goodness of our God. Well, that's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow as we continue to study out the restoration of all things. It's going to be powerful. My name is Brittany, reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Life is a choice. Choose life. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details. Hey,